Hi, welcome to Soft Focus. Cool cat and kitten. You may be vaguely aware of the fact that I am a cat fanatic. Low key crazy cat lady. I said low key. So I've been trying to expand my collection of cat based cinema tapes. Some amazing, some less so. The latest one to throw itself through my letterbox is The Cat in the Cage. Having never seen this before, but the cover was pretty cool, so even if the film is bad, it could look nice. Well, the, the film is bad. It's so bad that the other box has a section for character development to help you follow along at home. We'll come to that in a bit. The same cover also makes its main selling point very clear, because whoa, whoa! Also, Colleen Camp is there. It's written and directed by Tony, Tony Zarindest, known as the Persian Edward. So brace yourself. The plot is what you'd get from a game of Mad Libs after too many beers, and this is how I'm going to sell this to you. Ready? Bruce has escaped from a mental institution to his evil, sexy new stepmom who he suspects murdered his mother and his cat hates her. Stepmom is having an affair with the chauffeur who kills his dad. The chauffeur is also killed, and the cat discovers his body in some leaves. Bruce's brother returns, even though he was meant to be dead, and he is a werewolf. Look, try it yourself. So now that we've got this very simple premise laid out, let's dive right in, shall we? We begin with a doctor at the asylum, confirming that aside from being disturbed by his mother's death, he shows no signs of abnormal behaviour. So they just hand him his car keys and goodbye and good luck. At home, we're introduced to the maid who needs some extra milk because Rashid Khan and the new bride are coming home, as well as Bruce. The milk host says something about the old man having a bad heart and she's probably a bitch. We're getting all this exposition for free. Oh, she's not too hot on the old man with that bad But they didn't mic up his truck, so most of his mumblings are easily missed. Brucey boy arrives home, and rather than write dialogue, they make him mumble with random words thrown in. It's important to note, Bruce is obviously dubbed throughout this whole film, so his audio is better than everyone else's. Ha <laughs> ha, I hope he's well. I'm home. But why do you mistreat Samson, Mother? Easel, what the hell happened to you? I've been having nightmares waiting to hear from you. Except here, where they forgot to remove the original audio track. <laughs> it's a shame you can't dub in lighting. Wait for me! What are you doing, Samson? Leave her alone. What's all the noise out here? He's eager to see his cat, Samson. But, but he's Easel, 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 says he's had an ordeal. Look at this guy! Average Mog, loving that this is somehow the eponymous cat rather than some professionally trained Hollywood casted glamopus. Easel explains the day before his father and Susan got married, Samson attacked Susan, which Bruce relishes. Susan refused to come and live here while Samson remained, so Easel found a home for him 50 miles away. But he does end up back here a week later. Bruce blames Susan for his time in the nut house. Rashid and woohoo, Susan! Dock their butt, and she's mad because he has to instantly do business. I have no idea what it is because they can't fucking figure out how to mic people. Ralph, the chauffeur, drives her home. We hear a weird siren noise, some quiet sobbing, and Bruce has a very foggy flashback to his mother dying in bed. When people use the expression, my memory is hazy, you're not meant to take that as an artistic direction. Susan and Ralph toast to themselves and their makeout session is interrupted by Samson having a growl and he's going crazy at her, like a wild animal. That is one mean kitty. Susan is not happy and even angrier to learn Bruce is back. Look how much that cat hates her! Don't we all? And I don't blame him. Oh, the humanity! First my mother, now the cat. Turns out Bruce put dead animals in a car and bed. Also refers to himself as a cat. Are we sure he was fit to be released? In his unpredictable and cat-like ways, he rolls. Wait, what? What is that? Is that? Is that a hamster in a ball? Where'd this come from? It's just. It's just glued to the inside. Killer Kitty Samson chases menacingly while Bruce laughs. That is such a vicious attack. 
You don't have to be a professional cat behaviourist to know that Samson actually got first prize in the National Sweetest Little Guy competition. Maybe he was the only cat available, maybe they blew the budget and cat trainers aren't cheap. Maybe they would rather have an easygoing fella than realism. But whatever the reason, I'm glad that this man and his delightful antics are now forever preserved in film. Mr Khan calls his bride to let her know that he won't be home. And she lets him know where to shove his business. Not to worry though, Ralph is more than happy to get down to the kind of business that Susan likes. Plotting. And shaking her. She's not sure she can go through with whatever they're planning and needs convincing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, okay, wow. This is some terrible porn. Post coitus, Susan is convinced Samson and Bruce are out there. More hitting might shake her out of that. And Ralph calms her down by saying it's just a prowler. Samson is on the attack again. He will not let her get around so easy. Cheap slut. Here, it's very important we see Susan swimming naked. She puts a bikini on to talk about a fishing trip she wants him to take with Ralph under the guise of arrest. Ah, my beloved, fill the cup that clears today of past regrets and future fears. Tomorrow, why tomorrow I may be myself with yesterday's 7,000 years. Wait, what? Bruce goes to see his suddenly girlfriend to confirm that he's not gay in case that's what you were thinking. Yes, straight men have cat fixations too. Ralph and Rashid confuse one another about Aesop's fable about sour grapes. He was free, he freed himself, don't you see? He was no longer a slave to something he could not have. My God, even I am seasick watching this footage. Ralph is angry about being called stupid, so reveals his plan to get rid of Rashid and take everything from him and Susan. Also, Susan killed his wife, so he should just jump overboard. I came like water. Like wind, I go. Sorted. They're both presumed missing at sea, so when a police car pulls up, they're relieved to hear it's just some missing kids they're looking for. Phew. The next day, uh, Ralph. Is that Ralph? Is he wearing a fake beard under his fake beard? Well, he goes and sinks the boat. So when the Coast Guard finds him dinging about in the ocean, he can spin a story about what happened. Even the insurance believed that this year looks like a ramming accident. Ralph didn't lose any weight because he had canned soup to live off, and this is the part that gets the most scrutiny in the entire film. Why, oh, that's really something. Shipwrecked for a whole week, just like in the movie. Susan initiates another awkward and dimly lit sex scene, but not to worry, Samson is there to watch. Ralph follows Easel to the cellar. She's got a picnic basket, so it's probably a nice picnic. A bit dark and stormy for a picnic. But following the sounds of the purring leads to a... Catman! Yeah, that's right, we're cat. <gasps> Bruce attends a really sad disco with his suddenly girlfriend, and they do some magic tricks to cheer him up. another terribly lit sex scene. Shot sideways this time because the cameraman was lying down with them. After the police refuse to do anything about Ralph's disappearance yet, and Susan does some top tier lingerie acting. But Detective Hoffman, you don't understand. Bruce insinuates at dinner that Ralph is dinner. Chauffeur shish kebab. Bill, I'll check and vote. Cancel the sandwich. I don't want no Persian pastrami. Mmm. Persian pastrami. Pino makes this immaculate observation that cats always, always dig digging. before they take a shit. Take and that's all the cops need oh, yeah. to take a look at the suspicious pile of dirt. I want you to stay in here while we investigate that mound of dirt. Gee whiz, Samson, you've done it again. You were wrong about the meat. He's all here. Another case solved. Bruce and suddenly Gilda gives a crash course in exposition. Ali is Bruce's dead brother who thinks Susan and Ralph killed their father but he also tried to kill Bruce once and has a fascination with cages. Right. Gilda is sick of Bruce's zany bullshit and loud ADR and tells on him to the detectives. Did all that magic and dark sex mean nothing to you, Gilda? Susan responds to loud purring by shouting, Who is it? Which, to be fair, I do too. Samson blurrily leads her to Bruce's room. 
The lack of lighting in this film is reaching new heights. It's Fuzzy Bro, who pours at her much like Samson does, except this time she dies. This one ain't gonna be so easy to explain. Okay, side note, while watching this a fourth time to gather clips, I realised Tony Zarandis may have wanted to express Samson is Ali in the full cat form. It just dawned on me, but it's so fucking stupid. But then again, Easel wouldn't have sent Samson away if it was Ali. I, I think I'm giving this film too much credit. Okay, continue. Easel has been hiding out and calls Bruce to tell him her plan of bringing Ali to stay at the ranch. It's deserted. We'll keep him there. A convenient ranch. He's less fuzzy now, but he grabs a gun and just legs it. And this foot chase ends very unceremoniously. What? Gilda dobs them all in again, and so commences a ridiculous car chase, which looks like they could only film on one small bit of dirt from different angles, so they end up going around in circles. So they managed to shake the police quite quickly. Turns out they were lucky enough that a poor boy died in the winery, so they pretended it was Ali. Lots of good fortune comes from the bad luck of kids here. Unfortunately, Bruce drives straight back to the bit of dirt where the police were, so the chase begins once again. It's less of a chase and more of the police overtaking him so they can all skid out in unison. Arriving at the ranch, they shut themselves in the most bulletproof thing you can find on a farm, a horse box. And for a while, things are going okay because police can't aim. The detective and Bruce's doctor ask them to stop firing. Let me go in and talk to Bruce. I just got here myself, doctor. I'm sorry you're too late. Whoop. But it's told one of their men was hit, so I guess the gloves are off. Finally, the cops take down the extremely dangerous easel, enraging Ali, who leaves the safety of the horse box. But... Bruce thinks for a while and decides that that was definitely the best plan, so he copies him. Roll credits. During which we look at Bruce's O face the whole time. The credits say this title song was sung by Colleen Camp, but there was luckily zero singing. Frank Inn was the cat trainer, and he did a bang up job there. Cat sculptures and drawings, where were they? The back of the finished VHS box says the housemaid was doing witchcraft, which may have been true, but you wouldn't have been able to see it. I mentioned before that the other English cover has the character developments written on, which I'm guessing the guy noted down for his own benefit and decided, yeah, actually everyone could use this. I don't know what evidence Bruce has that Susan killed his mother, and all they can write about Ralph is that he is good at his job and you wouldn't think he was a murderer which is literally just a spoiler. Samson is credited having a much bigger role here than he actually has too, for a cat who isn't even listed in the credits. Thank you so much for watching this latest episode of Soft Focus. Thank you so much to my patrons for supporting me so that I can make these videos. And if you liked it, why not give us a like and a comment and a subscribe and let me know if there are any other cat-based films that you'd like me to cover on the channel, because I've got loads of ideas, but I want to hear yours. I'll see you next time.